William Styron, on the Pulitzer Prize winning novelist, died of pneumonia Wednesday afternoon on Martha's Vineyard where he lived with his wife Rose. He was 81 years old. Bill Styron is the author of Sophie's Choice, The Confessions of Nat Turner, and Lie Down in Darkness. His explorations of difficult historical topics, usually set in his native South, earned him a place among the leading writers of the post-World War II generation. He's often been compared to Faulkner and Hemingway. Norman Mailer said of Styron, no other American writer of my generation has had so omnipresent and exquisite a sense of the elegiac. Kurt Vonnegut, Styron's longtime friend, said he was dramatic, he was fun, he was strong and proud, and he was awfully good with the language. In 1990, Bill Styron published Darkness Visible, a memoir of madness about his struggle with mental illness. Our thoughts this evening are with his wife, Rose, his four children, Alexandra, Susanna, Paula, and Thomas, and his eight grandchildren. We remember him with a look at one of several conversations we had together on this broadcast. When do you write? In the morning? In the I write in the afternoon. Uh, my head is fuzzed in the morning. And I have a lot of stuff that I do in the morning, and I, I, I wait until my uh, body clock gets uh, churned yeah. up, which happens around 2 or 3 in the afternoon, then I start heading You're not in. sleepy from nice lunch? No, no, no I usually a a eschew alcohol at that time, <laughs> uh, so I'm not sleepy, yeah. I'm ready to go. Tell me about uh, Three Tales from Youth, A Tidewater Morning. This area is an area that I know very well, so uh, tell me about these three stories. Well, they were stories that were written independently. They, they, they had to do, the first one has to do with a, a remembrance I had as a young Marine at right. the age of 19 or 20. About ready to land on Okinawa. About ready to land on Okinawa and the kind of uh, engulfing homesickness that overtook me uh, at that time. Um, a reflection on my childhood, my mother and my father, in other words, all of these stories have a locale, and the locale is, is this, the same one. It's, it water. is Tidewater of Virginia, the, yeah. the area near the James River that I, I, I was born and reared. Yeah, do and, you have uh, some sense of that, that this is your geographical area? Faulkner was Mississippi, Reynolds mm -hmm. Price is, is uh, North Carolina, but the Tidewater is where you are the sort of, you are the yeah. voice of the Tidewater, so to speak. I think so, in a sense. Uh, you know, Hemingway said that we are the products of, uh, of our first 25 years, uh, that as writers we uh, feed off those tw first 25 years. For the rest years. of your career. Yeah, for, and I think there's some truth in that. I would even shorten it. I would say the first uh, 17 or 18 years of one's life. And those first or 17 or 18 years of my life were spent in this region uh, along the James River the estuarial part of, of, uh, of the Tidewater Where it Virginia. flows into the Norfolk and Newport News and Portsmouth area, right, right where Virginia and North Carolina come together. But exactly. The, yeah. you, the themes that you continue to explore are present here. Death and race. Death and race. Well... Or immortality. <laughs> or mortality. Yeah, they have preoccupied me most of my life, uh, I guess. Uh, Why is that? I don't know. I, I suppose growing up in, in Virginia in, a, in the 30s in a totally segregated society, I became intensely aware of this extraordinary social um, injustice. I don't mean to sound like I'm a, a politically correct writer. I don't think I am. But uh, the, the disparity between what I saw, that is this, this uh, freedom for whites and a kind of apartheid for blacks was impinged itself on my brain very early and I it haunted me I was haunted by what the French would call negritude uh, the sense of blackness being a part of my experience and yet being a, a, a separate part of my experience the sense of blackness meaning uh, the sense of, 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 of racial uh, th that I was surrounded by blacks right who had no relation to me, nor did I have any relation to them, this apartheid. It, it, it became uh, almost an obsession with me as a very young person. Yeah. And of course, that's what started me, I guess, writing eventually, many years later, the Confessions, Confessions of Matt Turner. Yeah. Yeah. Were you surprised, I want to come, I'm jumping around, but I'll just stay with it since you brought it up now. Were you surprised at the reaction it had and, and some of the criticism you took for that? For, for uh, the Confessions of Nat Turner. Yes, I was surprised. And, and, and quite, disappointed. And disappointed and quite shocked, yes. I, I took it in my stride because I, I realized I had done nothing uh, as, uh, either morally or aesthetically improper. 
but uh, it, it was a disappointment because I, I had hoped to write a book about slavery in which I, I covered as much as I could about, my, about that uh, dreadful institution. Uh, I tried to explore it to the best of my ability and try to show the tragedy of that institution. Uh, but it was the book was misconstrued. It was called racist and mm. that disappointment. And you come back to this notion here in in um, the story of Shadrach. Yeah, yeah. Tell me that story, which is in here, one of the three stories. Well, about twenty years ago, I was visiting back in Virginia. I met a, fr a boyhood friend of mine who yeah. who who said, "Do do you remember, or did you ever hear about that old black man who came all the way from Alabama, uh, and stayed and came to our house and and." Uh, uh, revealed to us that he had come from Alabama in order to die in Virginia where he had been born a slave. And this to me was such an astounding story that I just developed it into this story called Shadrach, which of course is about a 99 year old uh, one-time slave born in Virginia, re reared in Alabama and, 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 and experiencing most of his adult life in Alabama coming back, feeling death in his bones, and coming back to, uh, to Virginia to die on the ground that he had been born. Yeah. In your technique, you, you just take a central idea of a young, you were at Okinawa, but you were in the Marines early, at an early age, fought in World War II. You take just that and your own feelings. Here, you just take the idea of Shadrach, someone expresses this idea to you, and then you move, and, and, and your sense of connection to real reality is only well, there is only the idea for the story. Yeah. In, in sh the case of Shadrach, I had so many things uh, uh, involved. In this is an ancient old man. He's 99 years old. Well, just by coincidence, my father, who lived to be almost 90, was at that moment in my life dying yeah. himself. He, was, uh, he had, you know, reached the end of his life, and he was, uh, we, uh, he was living with us. And... and, and uh, the, the connection was obvious. I saw this dying white man, and I transposed him into the into the body of this dying black man. So uh, there were a lot of things like that that enter into one's creative process, the sort of subconscious, I guess. Mm -hmm. And the third one is about mothers and death. Yeah, it's the de death of my mother. Right. Yes, when I was thirteen, and um, that is very uh, quite autobiographical. Although none of the uh, None of the incidents in that story actually took place as I described them. It's an amalgam uh, of, of a lot of uh, impressions brought together in what I hope was a coherent mm -hmm. story.